It is time for Drew's News, your hearty, slow-cooked good news ragu. And with me at the <laughs> desk, best co-pilot in the biz, Rossi Ross Matthews. Hi, everybody. Hi. I'm a little al dente. I love that you were so nervous you didn't talk to Mark Cuban in a restaurant. I didn't want to disturb him, uh -huh. and I felt intimidated. So I just thought, oh, I won't bother him. And I have deeply regretted it yeah. ever since, but I get to right that wrong today. Well, you're so entrepreneurial too. I can't wait to see you guys like interact. I have so much admiration for him for so many different reasons, but I will say timing is everything. And if there was ever a time to converse with him, it's right now mm -hmm. because he's really got some of the biggest stuff going on, and I'm really excited to dive into it with him. Mm. Okay, so Ross, you've got the first story. Well, let's hit the headlines. Up first, we've got another iconic hairstyle trend coming back to heads everywhere, and I, for one, am excited. The Independent reports crimping. Remember crimping, you guys? Yeah, well, girl, it is back. The 80s poster girl for, yes, yeah. oh, the reaction. Yeah. And literally the headline is like, it starts out with an oh no. Are you, were you not a fan of the crimp back in the, the no, day? No, I actually feel the exact opposite. I love a tight crimp, a loose sure. crimp. Mm -hmm. Give me a crimp any day. Thank, thank you. See, we, I love that we have a common ground on this. I've never told you this, but my um, first girlfriend. <laughs> um, oh, dear. Yeah. My first girlfriend uh, was in eighth grade, and the only reason I dated her was because she had a crimper. And I thought, well, an Amber height. <laughs> I thought, <laughs> if she, maybe she'll let me crimp her hair one day. And? Well, she was pretty stingy with the crimper, if you know what I mean, so I never did it. I never did. Could we get a crimper here? Could I crimp you one day? I, I, you can have my locks, and you can crimp. I'll be your Amber, and you can crimp my hair. <laughs> That is the sweetest thing a woman's ever said to me. I'll be your amber and you can crimp my hair. Girl, you almost turned me straight right then. That, almost, almost. For like an eighth of a second. A little bit. Um, well, next up, it's a story of the power of pancakes. The Washington Post reports that when Curtis Kimball's wife told him that he needed to make friends, he threw a pancake party. He posted flyers around his neighborhood in San Francisco saying, oh. My wife says I'm getting a little weird, so I'm making some pancakes. He set up griddles in his driveway, and 100 people showed up hungry for pancakes and pals. And then he did it again for 300 people. Wow. And he hopes the idea spreads. I know. I know. I love a man whose brain works like this. Your wife is lonely, you make pancakes for the neighborhood, and it fixes it. This is what, someone who thinks outside the box. A little bit of batter can make life a whole lot better. Batter up, as batter they say. Up. Yeah. All right, next up, Drew, I want your take on this one. CNN reports a mom named Lorna made a deal with her 12-year-old son, Saver. If, if she said, if you stay off social media until you're 18, I'll give you 1,800 bucks. That's, the, that's what she said to her 12-year-old. Well, he took the deal. And now six years later, he just claimed the prize. Yeah, Lorna said, look, 18 years old. He said, give me the money. <laughs> Lorna said her three older daughters had a really rough ride on social media, which is not uncommon for teenagers. So she was inspired to sweeten the deal for her son. And it made me think, Drew, you know, your daughters are going to be teens, you know, in the next few years. What's the game plan with the social? Because that's, I mean, ooh. Well, it's interesting because I... I feel like, yeah, I'm, you know, what did parents feel like when that radio rolled in or the television or the home computer? Mm. A lot of different generations have had to deal with the complexities of the onslaught of information, but nothing has ever been this like ubiquitous. Um, it, it, it's a tough time for parents, of course. Um, it, we just, there's no manual for parenting, mm -hmm. let alone parenting in a social media age. And we'll find it along the way, but pay attention to when you think too much exposure, I don't know what's happening. And when it's too little, when I'm being overprotective, my kids watch TikTok, they love TikTok. You know, they'll watch a YouTube or they'll, you know, I'm like, I don't, I don't want you to have accounts. There's the balance, you're you, too young. The stakes are never higher when you're a parent. It's like you will do anything for your kids mm. and to protect them. And when all of this stuff is being thrown at us, it's, it's, Challenging, yeah. but we have to figure it out. Can I just ask a question? Why are we negotiating with children? How about just like, why, why are we paying them now? How about 
Marcus, give me your phone. <laughs> give me the phone. You're not on. Well, Rossi, I think you'll make a very good parent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you hear that, Willie? I'm gonna be a great parent. <laughs>